Which occupation do you believe to be the most prestigious in the world? Being elected President of the United States of America would be a dream come true for many people. The position is highly regarded. However, the salary is lower than expected. A yearly income of $400,000 is paid to the President of the United States while in office. There is a $50,000 budget for their out-of-pocket costs. While respectable, that's not quite as good as the super-rich pull-in. That said, there are a few U.S. presidents that are extremely wealthy. Let's find out who they really are and how they accumulated their fortunes. Welcome to Billionista. If you love videos about luxury living, please subscribe and click the bell so you never miss a video. And don't forget to like and share too. Number 5. Andrew Jackson Andrew Jackson, the seventh U.S. president. About $132 million was calculated to have been his whole wealth. Unlike the other presidents on our list, Jackson did not come from a wealthy family. When the Revolutionary War broke out when he was just a boy, he enlisted in the local army as a courier. He was only 14 when the Redcoats took him prisoner. He stood by his principles and was scarred for life when he refused to clean a Redcoat's boots. After his release, his mother and brother both passed away. As an orphan, he decided to pursue a law career to provide for himself. He followed his dream of being a successful prosecutor and did just that. He had to live in a log cabin which had some outbuildings for his slaves when he was first starting out. But as his fortune expanded, so did his house, and his slaves learned to produce bricks. Hermitage Plantation, built by Jackson, was a luxurious estate for its time, comprising eight rooms, all of which featured working fireplaces and chimneys. The home's crystal chandeliers, imported wallpaper, mahogany staircase, and marble mantles were all signs of its opulence. All through his life, he worked to make his house more elegant. Jackson was so successful that he was chosen to be Tennessee's first representative in Congress. He then became a senator, only to abruptly quit his post. Later, during the War of 1812, he was promoted to the rank of Major General. After serving in the first crucial war, he returned to the Senate and eventually ran for president in 1828 winning by an overwhelming margin. Jackson did something very unprecedented to celebrate his victory. He held a huge party, the White House celebration, which hosted an estimated 20,000 guests, swiftly degenerated into chaos. A bunch of drunks broke plates. Jackson had to take cover as a throng poured whiskey-laced punch all over the Oval Office and the rest of the White House furniture. After being labeled a jackass by his detractors, he came to portray himself with a donkey, which has now become the Democratic Party's official symbol. Number 4. Teddy Roosevelt Theodore Roosevelt, or Teddy to his family, was a man of startling fortune with $139 million to his name. But unlike Jackson, he was born into it. His family had been in America for generations, and they had amassed a fortune in almost every field imaginable. His folks owned a plate glass company and lived in a lovely New York brownstone. Teddy spent his younger years wandering over Europe, Egypt, and the Alps. Although severe asthma kept him in bed for much of his childhood, he attended Columbia Law School to pursue a career in law. After his dad died, he left Teddy and his brothers a fortune of $3.3 million. After deciding to pursue a career in politics instead of continuing his education, Teddy became the youngest member of the New York State Assembly. Soon after assuming the position, he lost both his wife and mother on Valentine's Day. He lost his job and moved away from New York because he couldn't bear to be there. He abandoned urban life and became a rancher in the Dakota Territory, but his run of ill fortune wasn't over just yet. 
it is unknown why he moved back and forth between New York and the Dakotas, but one harsh winter killed off his whole herd. He commanded the 1st U.S. Volunteer Cavalry Regiment, the Rough Riders, during the Spanish-American War. He stood for mayor again following his well-publicized service, and this time, he actually won. President was the next logical step, but his own party rejected his ideas because they were too radical. He served as McKinley's vice president, and then, following McKinley's assassination, he became the youngest U.S. president. In the meantime, please comment on the city you are watching from. I want to see how far our videos are reaching. Now, let's get back to the video. Number 3. Thomas Jefferson He was valued at about $236.8 million. Before his death, he actually held a lottery to pay off his debts and save his cherished estate of Monticello to the point where he sold his library to the government laying the groundwork for what would eventually become the Library of Congress. Despite this, nothing could stop Jefferson from indulging his one real love, spending. When he was heavily in debt, one of his final letters asked for a case of pricey French wine. In Virginia, Jefferson's family held a place of prominence. His education was superb. He studied law after graduating from the illustrious William and Mary. After five years of schooling, he was among the country's most well-versed legal minds, indicating he was among the highest paid employees in the company. He started building Monticello, back when he was a young lawyer and he never stopped. Jefferson spent his life making Monticello bigger and fancier than ever before. He invested a lot of money in the property, a few million at a time. The house was the most costly in the United States at the time. There were dozens of outbuildings on the property, along with high-quality furniture, fires in every room, and a huge collection of books. There were 130 slaves living on the farm, including Sally Hemings, the slave who birthed six of Jefferson's children. Number 2. George Washington At a period, when the United States could not afford to clothe its soldiers, Washington is reported to have had a net worth of $587 million. George Washington is yet another illustration of a wealthy president. He was born and raised in a rich planter family in colonial Virginia. Although less is recorded about his early life, it is a common knowledge that after his mentor and half-brother Lawrence Washington passed, he inherited Mount Vernon from him. The 2,000-acre farm was far more than ordinary Americans had, but Washington had plans to increase that. When he was old enough and had worked his way up to ownership of the property, Washington enlisted in the French and Indian War, where he rose through the ranks to become the war's overall commander. At the time of his administration, his compensation of $25,000 accounted for 2% of the entire federal budget of the United States, since much of Washington's wealth had been amassed at Mount Vernon. He moved there after leaving the presidency. It wasn't enough that he possessed 50,000 acres of property. He also managed the most successful distillery in the United States. The distillery churned out over 11,000 gallons of alcohol every year. There were 50 outbuildings on the property in addition to the main house. There is a lot of neoclassical ornamentation and painted paneling throughout the mansion. The new room, for example, is a two-story space with marble flooring, a Pelagian window, and a massive brick chimney. There is also a salt room, smokehouse, laundry house, washing yard, storehouse, attendance quarters, and an ice house are just some of the outbuildings amenities. Number 1. Donald Trump With a net worth of $3 billion, Donald Trump has more money than any other president. If we assume that the average American worker will earn $1 million over the course of their lifetime, then Trump's net worth is equal to that of 1,823 workers. 
Trump's family has been wealthy since the 1920s. His family ran one of the country's most successful real estate enterprises, which he inherited. By the time he was 22, Trump had taken an active role in running the family business, which had fallen on hard times. He rose to the position of company president and earned a salary of $260,000 per year. He then constructed Prospect Tower, which brought in $300,000 annually between shares and management fees. After only five years as CEO, Trump's wealth was estimated to reach $200 million in 1976. Trump's ascent to power and prominence was facilitated by his use of aggressive business practices, which he put to use in constructing some of New York's most opulent structures. The media fawned over him because of his status as a tough negotiator. He was frequently featured in broadcasts and on magazine covers. He persisted in real estate, first failing, then succeeding, and then succeeding. And all the while, Trump has been living it up, thanks to his appearances on shows like The Apprentice and his successful ventures in the modeling industry. He owns three mansions in the Mar-a-Lago area with an estimated worth of $25 million, an estate in Bedford, New York with 213 acres of rolling hills and an indoor swimming pool encapsulated in imported marble is valued at another $24 million. Other properties in his portfolio include a $13.5 million home in Beverly Hills, a $13 million home in St. Martin, the penthouse in Trump Tower, and a $54 million yacht. So Billionistas, which president is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. That's it for this time. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.